Hello there, welcome back. In this video I'm going to be making a ridiculously cheap shower filter for a pond. And to do that I'm going to be using five boxes. It's going to be a five tier shower filter. That's the box there. Reasonably strong construction with a lid. The lid is important. This with the lid was only one pound. That's about one and a half dollars. That was from like a, a cheap store. I think it was Pound Stretcher or Poundland or something like that. Where coincidentally everything is a pound. Okay, so these come totally watertight. So no holes in the bottom, no holes in the top. We need a drill with various size drill bits. And we need something to get our water into the first container. So for that, I'm just using an old fitting. Go to a plumbing shop or go to a, anywhere that sells koi carp or pond fish. They'll have numerous fittings to get a pipe into a container. Also using a very small diameter pipe. I think that's about 20 mil, three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna be drilling extra holes in here. This is just the one I picked up from an old filter. It's got an end cap on. It's not absolutely necessary because we're gonna be drilling holes in, but this one's got one, might as well use it. Got a rubber seal there as well, because we're basically gonna sandwich this side and this side onto the side of our first container. Gonna attach a flexible pipe to there, back to a pump, pump water in, water will shower down through all of our containers. So that's the inlet. For the outlet, I'm using another piece of pipe that I've cannibalized from an old filter. This is basically pretty much the same as that other one, just a bigger scale tank connector with a rubber seal. Again, any plumbing shop or any pond supply place will have these fittings. Out of there, we've got an inch and a half pipe, which is about 40 mil. And that just pushes in there. This is gonna be inside the container. This is gonna be outside the container. Again, our nut is gonna secure it and sandwich it, make it watertight, etc. Really? That's it, that's all we need, apart from media, which I'll get to later, that's all we need to make an awesome filter, very, very cheaply. Right, we've got five containers. One of them will not be drilled yet. Put that over there. One of the lids will not be drilled at all. So we'll keep that separate. Four of the containers will be drilled with a, ooh, I don't know, six to eight mil drill, which is about a quarter of an inch or so. I'm not gonna film it. It's very boring watching somebody drill holes. But basically four of them are gonna have holes drilled in the bottom like that. Using the same size drill bit, four of the lids are gonna be drilled like that. Actually, just a note on the lid, when you're selecting the containers and lids from these cheap stores, Make sure that there's a bit of a, an indentation in here. So if any water does happen to build up here, say a few of your holes get blocked, it's still gonna be able to get down the remainder of the holes. It's not just gonna go straight over the side. That's pretty important. This one's got like a ridge design as well, which actually gives it more strength because we are gonna be stacking them. Right, so we've done all that. We've drilled all the holes in four of the containers and four of the lids. We're gonna take a container that's been drilled and a solid lid. That is gonna be our top tray. So we need to get the water in here somehow. That's the fitting we're gonna to use to get the water in and distribute it for the shower. So in order to make the hole in here, we've got a one inch drill bit. Now the actual size of the drill bit that you'll be using will depend on what your attachment is like. I mean, you could even just drill a hole and poke a hose through the top. That would do but I want to go with a spray bar idea to distribute the water and have it showering down properly once I've drilled the hole I'm gonna push this through from the outside put the locking nut on the back tighten it all the way down to secure it and remember we've got a rubber seal here and then I'm gonna push the spray bar into here water's gonna come in and once I drilled the holes in here properly it's gonna shower out down onto the foams and through the media Looks about right. That was 
easy. Nut tightened. Spray bar drilled. Spray bar attached. With the holes underneath. Now for our outlet, which is going to be in the bottom container, we're going to do pretty much the same. This is another fitting with a lock and nut, rubber washer, tightens up, seals everything in. But for this one, we're going to drill it with a hole saw because it's quite, it's quite big. It's roughly two inches this one. Now the outlet needs to be bigger than the inlet because this is going to be a gravity filter. So water is going to be forced in under pressure from the pump, shower down through our various containers and all the media and foams and then it's going to come out here by gravity so this needs to be pretty big really for something of this size it needs to be a minimum of inch and a half which is 40 mil so in the undrilled one we're going to put the outlet near the bottom about there So using exactly the same technique as we did for the inlet, that gets pushed through from the outside, lock and nut goes on the back, tightens up, keeps it secure. Now there's the pipe we're going to be using inside of here, and we're going to drill loads of holes in it, so the water will shower down, it'll pool in the bottom a little bit, and it'll end up going through all these holes and back out to our pond. So I need to drill some more holes in here, and I also need to cut that size as well. Don't worry about drilling these holes in perfectly straight lines and having them equally spaced. It really doesn't matter. Just put, make it like Swiss cheese. Just put a nation of holes in. Okay, about there. Looks about right. That's it. So the water's going to come down through all our containers into here, through all these holes that we've just drilled in the outlet pipe, and then out here. And use an inch and a half rigid pipe, we can extend that back to our pond. That's the drilling done, so we can put the drill bits, the drill away. It's all the sawing done, so we can put the saw away. Um, yeah, now we're ready for media and foams. Now if you can't find the necessary attachments to make a proper outlet, and a proper inlet, don't worry about it. Just stick your hose in the top that's attached to your pump, drill holes in the bottom of your bottom container and suspend it over your pond so the water just drops straight out the bottom into the pond. That's what a lot of Japanese koi breeders do. They basically just have huge shower filters. Pipes going in the top, going through all the media, just pouring straight back in the pond. This one, I'm making fancy. Now this is a modular system and what that means is that if you have a small pond all you need is a couple of containers. You need one with your foams and a bit of media in and the other one full of media. That would do. For a slightly bigger pond you would add another media compartment. Bigger pond again you add another one and if you've got a really big pond tiny little footprint and you've got maximum filtration there. Imagine each one of these full of good media, water showering down through it. Absolutely awesome. Okay, you've seen how that goes together. Not working yet because we haven't got the media or foams in, but now we're gonna talk about the different sorts of media. The better it is, the smaller your filter needs to be because you'll have more effective surface area in a filter with good media than you will in a filter with fairly crappy media. And when I show you the different types of media that you could use in this, I'm going to go from cheap and not very effective to more expensive and very effective. So the first ones up 
won't be that effective the last ones will be very effective and when I say effective what I'm meaning there is the nitrogen cycle the plastic medias will hold aerobic bacteria very well so they'll reduce ammonia and nitrite they don't support anaerobic bacteria so they won't reduce nitrate the later medias we're going to have a look at will support anaerobic bacteria in varying amounts and what that means is you're going to get ammonia nitrite and nitrate reduced and if you can reduce nitrates in a pond that's going to cut down the amount of water changes you need to do so if you've got koi carp and you want them to grow you need to reduce those nitrates some of these medias will do that for you if you use enough this filter with the five boxes I would say would do maybe it's a 2,000 gallon heavily stocked pond depending on the type of media that you use right starting with number one this is something called flow core it's basically just chopped up bits of corrugated pipe huge hole in the middle hardly any surface area but if you use enough of it it can work the next one is a German media it's actually a sort of helix, it's, it's very, very big, approximately an inch long by three quarters of an inch diameter. See how much more surface area that one's got? Then we've got another sort of helix. You can see the surface area that one's got. So that one's going to get a lot more surface area in the same volume. This is just commoner garden gravel. This is 20 mil, you might want to use 10 mil, that'll give you more surface area per volume. And it's quite rough holds a reasonable amount of bacteria and that is the ghetto option even if you scoop it up off a footpath to use it that will work now the next one looks like lava rock but this is actually something called alpha grog and it's a byproduct from the foundry process as far as I know and that's a ceramic media that's got good surface area a hell of a lot more than the gravel or anything that's come before it and that one will hold some anaerobic bacteria now this one is a volcanic porous rock called pumice very very light it's got an excellent internal structure and that one holds quite a lot of anaerobic bacteria inside it once it gets established so that is a good option it's uh, it's reasonably expensive compared to the alpha grog but it does a cracking job it'll also help to mineralize the water for your koi as well and the last one is biohome ultra this was actually designed for use in shower filters and large sumps. Now this is made from specially selected sand and powdered glass and a few other secret ingredients to give it a perfect internal structure for supporting a really good balance of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Excellent. Now ultimately the media that you choose for your filter will depend on your budget and what you want from your filter. If you don't mind doing water changes and all you want is the ammonia and nitrite removed, go for the plastic media. It's cheap and it's very effective. If you want successful filtration, i.e. the full cycle, so the removal of ammonia, nitrite and nitrate, you really want to be looking at the ceramic, the natural stone or the bio home. Now I want my filter to be as awesome as it possibly can be because I'm actually going to use it on a big outdoor aquarium part of my secret project so I've gone for bio home so the first thing that goes in on top of the media is a fine pad cut to size that's going to take out the fine muck on top of that I'm going to use a medium density foam with bumpy bits to catch the medium muck there you go and on top of that we're going to put a coarse one. You can actually see through that. So this black coarse one is going to strain out the coarse muck. It's going to strain out the medium muck. And the white one, the very fine one, is going to strain out the fine muck. And what that means is the water is going to be very, very clean when it gets to the media and it flows down all these chambers. And that's going to extend the useful life of our media. There you go.
You could even have it showering back into your pond as well. There you go, DIY shower filter. Took me less than an hour, cost me next to nothing. And you know how to do it if you want to make your own. Now if you've enjoyed this video about how to make a DIY shower filter, please hit the thumbs up, share it anywhere you want, subscribe if you want to subscribe, and I just want to say thank you very much for watching, I shall see you next time. I forgot to tell you about my other videos, I've got hundreds on my channel, they're all split up into different playlists because I've got loads of different sorts of topics that I cover on there, but there is quite a lot of pond ones and there's a lot of aquarium ones, so if you've enjoyed this, you might enjoy them. Check them out, thanks for watching, see you next time. Yeah, just make sure you tighten that up properly. Don't grab a hold of it and try and tighten it up like I've just done. Now then, Black Sphinx. Are you going to go outside and catch some mice today or not? <laughs>